Today we are talking about biodiversity. Biodiversity is short for biological diversity. And it refers to the number of different species in a given area. So when scientists go out to different communities, they look at you know, how many different species are there. Are there lots of different species? Are there only a few different species? And as we looked at biomes, Remember, we talked about tropical rainforests having a lot of biodiversity. They're one of the most biodiverse places on Earth. So if you go out to a rainforest, you might happen to see a lot more species than if you were to just go into your backyard or a forest here in Wisconsin. So biodiversity, we're going to talk about why it's important today. And we're also going to um, talk later about how it's measured. You do not need to write this down. These are just fun facts uh, that I wanted to share with you. So currently we only have 1.9 million species on Earth discovered. Now you might ask, well, why do I say only? Because that's a pretty big number. The reason I say only is because scientists think we still have to discover that there are 8 million other species we haven't found yet. Well, how can they decide how many different species there are that we haven't found yet? They actually look at how many species we find a day. They look at how many species we've already found. And they look at how much of the world we've discovered. So there are still a lot of places we haven't discovered, particularly the ocean. We have not gone super, super deep into the ocean and mapped out the whole ocean floor. There's a lot of places that we haven't gone. So scientists think that we still have to discover over 80% of the species that inhabit Earth. Scientists find new species every single day, especially in the rainforest. So biodiversity is super important, but we still don't even know all of the species that have been identified on this Earth. There are still millions left that need to be identified. I do want you to write this down. So if we count up the number of species, like the number of fish, the number of mammals, the number of reptiles, like how many different species of mammals are there? How many different species of reptiles are there? The insect group has the most number of species. So if you look at this graph here, the bluish region is insects. So insects, there are, um, are over 50% of the world's species belong to insects. Now, this doesn't mean that insects rule the world and insects are everywhere. Well, they are everywhere. But it doesn't mean that there are like millions of insects total and not millions of mammals. There are still millions of mammals. What this graph is showing you is that there are, you know, hundreds of thousands of different species of insects. And there are more different species of insects than there are different species of mammals. So if you think about insects, you know, mosquitoes, ticks, moths, bees, all of those things, those are all different species versus, you know, mammals with cats, dogs, elephants, okay? So if you were to list all those, you'd be able to list more insect species than you would any other group. All right, we have three levels of biodiversity, okay? The first one is called ecosystem diversity. And as you can guess, it refers to the variety or different number of ecosystems. So remember, we talked about ecosystems. They have to have a biotic and abiotic factors. And we can kind of talk of biomes as ecosystems. So let's look at Wisconsin, okay? We've got grasslands in Wisconsin. We've got deciduous forests, okay? Um, so those would be the types of ecosystems we have. Now, if you look at the whole United States, that has a lot more ecosystem diversity because there are a lot more different ecosystems in the United States as a whole than just Wisconsin. For example, the United States has taiga, it's got um, grassland, like we already said, deciduous forests, it also has deserts. So we have a lot more ecosystems than just Wisconsin. Next up, we have species diversity. This talks about the number of different species in an area. This is typically what scientists talk about when they talk about 
biodiversity in general. Usually they're talking about species. So if you go out to your backyard and you count how many different species are there, um, and then you compare it with some other ecosystem, you can decide or tell which one is the most diverse in terms of species. And remember, when we talked about biomes, we said species diversity is greatest near the equator, where those a lot of those tropical rainforests are. And then genetic diversity refers to all the different genes in a population. We talked about this when we talked about natural selection. Remember when we talked about evolution, we said populations that have lots of different genes are more likely to survive in the long term because chances are if there's a disease or a predator, they have a gene, somebody has a gene that will help them survive or adapt to their environment. So genetic diversity, all the different genes in a population. If we were all genetically identical, like we were all twins, none of us would have any uh, more of an advantage than somebody else because we would all have the same genes. So it's important to have lots of different genes in a population. All right, why do we need biodiversity? What does it give us? What are the benefits? First of all, it maintains food webs. We've just finished a unit where we talked about food webs. If we look at this food web, I know it's really blurry here, but if we take a look at this food web, we have this fox, okay? This fox eats rabbits and it eats shrews. Shrews are kind of like possums. So the fox eats the rabbits and the shrews. Let's say the shrews all die. Maybe there's a disease, maybe there's a hunter that comes in and kills them, then what? Well, the red fox can still eat all the hares, right? There's still something else for it to eat. So even though the shrews might die, there are um, other organisms for this fox to eat. Now, if this food web was not very complicated and you know we didn't have those rabbits, then maybe the red fox would die, okay? And maybe the insects that the shrew eats would explode in population. So the more species we have, the easier it is for our food webs to be maintained. Because if one animal ends up dying, typically the other organisms can find another food source or another, um, or there will be other predators. All right, next up, it ensures or makes sure that all of our nutrients are cycled. So we have talked about the water cycle. Remember, plants are a huge part of that water cycle with transpiration when they release uh, evaporation from their leaves. Carbon. We talked about how plants and animals are part of that carbon cycle. Imagine trying to do car the carbon cycle without plants, right? How, where would animals get their carbon, okay? And then how would we get it out of the atmosphere and into those animals if we don't have plants? So carbon, water, and nutrients are cycled when we have lots of different organisms that can help with those nutrient cycles. All right, genetic diversity. This gives organisms a better chance of surviving. We talked about this on the previous page with genetic diversity. So let's say, for example, we have a new predator that comes along, okay? And it can run really, really fast. Well, if there are a couple rabbits that have genes that allow them to run a little bit faster, they might be able to survive and not get eaten by this predator. Or maybe there's a disease that wipes out a lot of the population. Well, maybe a couple individuals have a gene that allows them to survive this disease. So genetic diversity is super, super important. And then lastly, think of all of the things that we get from different plants and animals. We get food, okay? We get water, pure, clean water from the water cycle. We get shelter. Imagine trying to build a house without any like tree materials, without any logs or any wood. It would be a lot harder. Medicine, okay? A lot of our medicines come from the rainforest, from plants and animals in the rainforest. And they're now used in, you know, doctor's offices to help people get better. So all of these different species give humans a lot of different benefits.
I'm going to stop there. So today we talked about the three levels of biodiversity. What are they? Ecosystem, species, and genetic. We talked about what biodiversity is, means the diversity in an area. Typically we talk about the number of species. And then we talked about why biodiversity is important. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to look at the different biomes and how much biodiversity they have. So what I'm gonna have you do is I'm going to have Ms. Hoberg pass out one bag to each of the desks, all right? One bag with beads in it. These beads represent the organisms that are found in a community. So if you look at that plastic bag, it has a label on it. And that label will tell you what it is. So here's my awesome plastic bag drawing, okay? And uh, let's say that I have a rainforest, okay? So I've got beads inside. And what I'm gonna have you do is I'm going to have you take those beads out. Now be careful so that you don't, if you just dump them out, they're gonna go all over and it's gonna be a disaster. So just take them out, at least set them on your desk, all right? And here's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna pretend that each of the different colors of beads represents a different species. So here's a green bead, right? Maybe that's a caterpillar. Maybe this blue bead is an elephant. Maybe this pink bead is a tarantula, okay? So all the beads represent different colors. So what I need you to do right now with those beads is you need to group them. Okay, so right now they're all like mixed around and I need you to group them by colors. So put all the colors that are the same in a pile, okay? Now, if they're sparkly, sparkly is a different color. Like green and sparkly is different than solid color and sparkly, okay? So put those in two different piles. Those are two different species. If they don't look the same, they are two different species. So they gotta look exactly the same. And pay close attention because there are some beads that are like white and some that are like cream or off-white. So here are my beads that I put in my piles, okay? Some of you might have five piles, some of you might have two, some of you might have 10. It doesn't matter how many piles you have. I already counted out all of these. So you should, whatever number of pile you have is totally okay. Now, we're gonna count how many species you have, okay? And this is gonna go on your chart. So for me, I look at how many different colors I have. Well, here's one color, here's two colors, and here's three. So on my chart, I would write number of species, I would put three. I have three different species, okay? Now what I need you to do is I need you to count how many total beads you have, okay? So here I would have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So that's the total number of organisms I have in my ecosystem. So I had three and 15. So I'm gonna give you a second to do that. And you're gonna write that in your chart. Now the last part, you gotta do a little math. If you wanna save all the math for later, that's totally fine. But you're going to take this first number divided by the second number in your chart, and you should get a decimal point. So I'm just gonna make up a number because I don't have a calculator on me. I wanna say it's 0.16, but I really have no idea. So we're gonna go with this is my decimal. Now the closer your decimal point is to one, the more biodiversity your environment has, okay? So for example, mine says 0.16, that's not very high. If I had something that says 0.8 or 0.9 or 0.7, that would be high, okay? So once you're done, put the beads back in the bag, seal it up, and then bring it back up to the front and you need to grab a new bag, all right? And you're going to count the number of species and the total number of organisms for all of the bags, all right? And then when you're, when you're done, there are a couple of questions you need to answer at that bottom of that sheet.